Bussy in the morning, bussy in the evening, bussy at summertime. When you're grabbing bussy, you might end up doing time. Bussy in the morning, bussy in the evening, bussy at supper time. If you're grabbing bussy, you might end up doing time. You know, I have noticed we have barely gotten any of purse-lipped Teddy this season. And I'm happy about it. But we've gotten a lot more wall. And I ain't happy about that. The episode opened with Caesar saying, Walt, we treated you like shit because, well, that's what you are to us. We never gave a fuck about you, so I don't know why you think we'd give a fuck now just because you didn't found a new baby mama that you gone run off in two years and two pregnancies. Oh, Jesus. Donna gone say, ooh, Walt's drinking again. Hard, too. I bet you'd like it from Walt hard, too, with your sink fucking ass. So Puma gonna act like it's a serious issue. Well, I guess Puma is the face of a serious issue since we don't have oh shit. Oh, I'm glad we don't have oh shit. Ah, oh, Jesus. Now we got Walt with this heifer. I don't like her. I don't know why I don't like her, but I do not, I do not, ooh. I can't even say this wig ain't why I fuck with her because this Karen Huger is skew. But you know, that's not a crime. Anybody, let me know in the comments. I, I just, mm -mm, it's curdled. She's curdled. Oh, God, so now she's saying you ain't showing me no ideas, but I got an idea. Put some brown gel on the back of that head because Jesus Christ, all these flyaways got my attention flying away from the scene. She said, I want to go to premarital councilman. Premarital councilman. 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 Well, at least I know that's why your head's so fucked up because your brain fucked up. Councilman. Premarital councilman. Okay. Walt is just as drunk in the confessional as he is in this scene. And yeah, I guess you're going to be all right, but but we gonna, <laughs> but we ain't going to give a fuck about you. Oh, God, Puma, we don't care about you, your struggle hair, or your mixy of a wife. I can't stand Kwani. Kwani, you have to do everything on your own with your children because you decided to have children by a nothing, which is exactly what you did with your career, with your life, and with your education. Nothing. And that's exactly what you're getting out of life. Nothing. Oh, God. Now we got Toothless Donna and No Nothing Alex on a date. Now, how are you bouncing on breasts, but your back was just fucked up? Oh, so she gonna break the news to Alex that she fucking Tati at the Museum of Sex. I don't know why you just didn't bring her ass into the stall when y'all was fucking. He seemed to be down with it. So now Donna thinks she's getting a proposal and she's like, well, fuck that puss. I'm here for the peen. Honey, all you're here for is the fact that you know, ooh, I can at least run up somebody else's credit and not get put out again like you were two seasons ago on the news. I know he did not just ask her for a baby. Donna can't even take care of her own dental hygiene. So how is she going to take care of a baby? She doesn't even know not to fucking stalls. She's still giving you toilet twat. Really, you want her to, to, to shit out a baby in a commode? That's what she'd do. Child, she'd probably think it was gas from the wings and go in, come out, oh. I, you, really, like, you already have a child you can't take care of. Why do people want children they can't afford? I'm sick of it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look, uh, Alex, if you're going to act, you're going to need to learn how to act. I thought Donna would be excited about this. I really thought we were on the path to having a kid together. You ain't got marriage to first. Your ass is barely off disability. But now you want to pump out a baby when you couldn't even pump out an orgasm? Fuck you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Donna said she was 27. Donna, you are a lying bitch. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't say shit else. I can't say shit else. <laughs> and Alex gonna say they got a steady stream of income. The fuck? You done got thrown off the show last season and Donna out here maiming people with tattoos. What steady stream of income? You got, you're, you're sorry fuckers is what you are. You got a steady stream of disappointment, a steady stream of bad decisions, a steady stream of failure. Okay, now you think we gonna rehash that little dominatrix scene y'all did with Ray J and Princess 
with uh, dusty ass Puma and his piece of shit wife who I can't stand. Oh hell, mm -mm, honey. Guess what? This is a fuck Black Ink Crew episode. Fuck Black Ink Crew. And I'ma tell you something, Kwani, who done got trapped in a marriage that you really don't want to be in. I'm sick of her. And it's time she knew. Oh, Jesus. Now we got Walt whining about this marriage. This woman don't want you. And the truth is, you don't want her either. All you want is a warm bed to sleep in and somebody else to impregnate and leave. So now I'm supposed to sit here on my porch and watch Walt, drunk, at a therapy session, play at being in a relationship with someone who has no emotional intelligence? That's what I'm supposed to do? I see you're drunk. I can see it plain as day. But I'm supposed to pretend you're really here to get therapy with this sorry secondary strumpet who gives New York City a bad name. Oh God, you know what? I really can't stand this heifer. I really can't stand her. You already whining about the cheating. The thing is, you get with a dude that you know, that you know is going to cheat on you, and then you get surprised that the sun rises in the fucking morning, and now you want to needle his ass about it for the rest of your fucking life. Here's the thing. If you want somebody faithful, get somebody faithful. If you want a better life, make better choices. But really, you're going to get with Walt and expect somebody to be faithful? You're an idiot. I'm sorry, honey. Don't pick up community cock unless you're ready to pass it to the next puss. I've had it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, look, you can't have Walt drunk at the confessional. It's just, it's too disturbing at this point. And low-key, it's fucked up for Big Fish to be filming him this drunk. But you know it's Big Fish. They did that shit with uh, Sky at the beginning of the season. So now they're probably going to be like, okay, well, if you want to have a drink before the, before the filming, you can. We wouldn't recommend it. But, you know, here's some hen. And the therapist ain't shit because how the fuck you going to have somebody drunk in your damn session? And y'all just going to act like it ain't happening? Mm-hmm. Therapy my ass. I also want to know, why are you marrying somebody where you got to have therapy to get over the chitete? Why don't you think you deserve better and can find someone better? Why are you staying committed to this to this literal worthless alcoholic who couldn't keep custody of his children? You could get more out of Safari's vibrator than you could out of Walt. Why do you insist on hanging this albatross around your neck when you love to make a poor choice? Look at your head. Your head's a poor choice. I am not even going to pretend to watch that bullshit with Bay and that extra who don't look nothing like her. I swear for God, I was like, that is not your pappy. You done found him at the, um, at the Asian American Acting Society and you went and saw him. You saw his profile. You said, okay, let me get his ass off central casting. Oh, Bay, you ain't shit. Oh, God, so now we got Donna in Long Island getting some coochie and condolences from Tati on the fact that her ain't shit broke-ass ugly man proposed pregnancy rather than marriage. I, I don't know why he doesn't propose getting your bottom tooth fixed. Why don't he do that? That way you could look nice in your wedding. Well, you can never look nice, so you know what? You may as well remain toothless. You're already ugly. I really cannot believe they turned the last half of the episode into a Korean soap opera. Oh my God. From telenovela to Korean soap opera, VH1 is trying to give it to us, honey. They're, look, they're saying we can give you diversity, diversity, diversity. Oh, Jesus, Caesar's still whining about this painting. Caesar, you're ugly in all forms, all shapes, and all ways. Don't nobody want to look at you, the real you, much less an artistic interpretate. Teddy, if you're going to wear this jogging suit, I'm going to need you to go on and put on a sports bra because, oh my goodness, honey, your, your tits are doing that whole thing where they just flop over to the side. And, and you're too young for that. You haven't even had any children. You should have, you know, firm, pert breasts that are up and at attention. You need a bra, girl. A bra. Ooh. Cross your heart, T. I can't believe those boobs have that much side meat, you know, so young. He looked like he got grandma breasts. Is Tommy lactating? Does Tommy, does, does he have a baby that I don't know about? Because those, that, that looks like lactate. 
Them breasts look like Porsches and Kenyas. And they, they, you know, they're pumping. Miss Kitty said Teddy looked like he'd been breastfeeding his whole life. I mean, that shit looks uncomfortable. It really does look like he needs to pump right now. Like, it looks like any minute, like, he's just gonna, like, just the leaking. I can't. All right, well, that was the shitty little episode. Don't grab my pussy. Don't grab my pussy. I'm your cameraman. I don't want to be anything more to you. I swear. Don't grab my pussy. I'm not attracted to you. You look like Yoda and the Gollum.